your strength and show me your weakness We're in this together now We're in this together now Give me your love and tell me your secrets Cause we're in this together now Yeah, we're in this together now Welcome everyone. There's Ben too on the uh, end of the promo there. Ben assisted me on that day, did some of that drone footage and everything that you saw there. Um, G'day everyone. Uh, Welcome back to the usual show. Uh, Really excited to be here again. Uh, I thought I'd, uh, each week while I'm getting my coffee and getting organised, I thought that I'd, um, you know, sort of show some of the videos that I've done. I'm so proud of the work that I've done. And, And then just to put them on once and sort of never see them again, I thought that I'd share them. Uh, so everyone can sort of see them again and, you know, and it gives me something to play while I'm out there getting a coffee and getting organised. So let, let me just check who's here. I'm just saying Gilbert's here. G'day, Gilbert. Uh, Ben's also here. Uh, Hero is saying <laughs> greetings, coffee dudes. Um, Jim's also here. G'day, Jim. Dave Sincere is here as well. Dwayne, congratulations to Dwayne on your promotion. Dwayne got a, an amazing promotion uh, in San Francisco working with the cable car. So congratulations, Dwayne, you deserve it. An amazing man. Uh, we got uh, Costa here as well, Julian's here. Um, Hector, good day, Hector, how are you? What's up from New Jersey, Hector said. Uh, Jeffrey said, hello all. Uh, Carol's here as well. Carol put an amazing photo this morning in the group. Uh, it was terrific. And I actually had a discussion with her because um, I actually said to Carol that 
uh, your, she was trying to say that it was the camera that took the shot. The, the shot that Carol took was amazing. And um, I said, no, it wasn't, Carol. You were the one that took that actual shot. It was your image. Uh, you know, it's your perfect timing that grabbed that shot at that moment. She was saying it was underexposed and she used the amazing recovery of the A7 III, which it is true that you have got that recovery, but if you haven't got that moment captured in that shot, nothing matters. And that's what I was trying to say to Carol, that, you know, don't underestimate how much the ability is to capture that pure moment. And that's what she did. Um, who else? Anthony's here as well. Um, Mick is saying good morning, David. Barry Street's here as well. G'day, Barry. How are you? Um, Leslie is also here. Reza, uh, look glitchy to me. Not sure. It was probably YouTube. Look, who knows? At the moment, YouTube is playing up sort of everywhere. I noticed yesterday there was a whole stack of the USA went down. So uh, it's probably YouTube, Reza. Uh, it looked good from my side because I was checking from here on the live feed, but who knows? It's it's just YouTube. Um, Jeffrey said, great video, David. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Um, Carl said, hello, people. Jim said, Dwayne Norfleet wished I could have been there for your group shoot. Yeah, it was so much fun in San Francisco with uh, Dwayne. Um, Julian said, right. Uh, Dwayne said, I know, Jim, but maybe we can shop you in. <laughs> I think he's talking about photoshopping me and I love it. Bill said, hi, Dave. Blue Moon Beer has coffee beer. Really? Uh, the best of both worlds. Wow, that sounds fantastic. I'm drinking Milo. Look, it's cold today. We're, we're basically into winter. Uh, I think we're going to have a top of about 15 degrees Celsius today. Um, so it's cop. This is why I'm wearing my um, Star Trek top. I just need one of those, you know, the logos down here. That would be perfect. I'd fit right in. I'm going to take this off now that I've stopped doing this. So let me get rid of that. <coughs> Um, yeah, so I, I would, I'd look like I, I should be on the Star Trek Enterprise dock. <laughs> I love it. Um, what else? Who else is here? So, so you've got Blue Moon Beer Coffee. We are in pre-show, guys. Now, just to let you know, too, if you don't want to watch the pre-show, uh, check down below because I will have the timeline um, down below. Uh, so you'll be able to watch that there. Um, and that way, if you don't want to skip or watch every single story, you can sort of change from that. Um, what else? Uh, Jim, Ez, Eras, uh, is it Ezra? I think it is. Is saying hi from Florida as well. And Jim's also saying hi, Fla. All right. So let's get started on the show. I'm just going to play the intro and then we're going to get stuck into a few things. Catch you in a minute. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, back for our usual Sony Alpha News and Rumours show. Um, got some interesting discussions today to talk to you, particularly the first story uh, today. I'm going to talk to you. I got a message from a guy last night. Uh, David won't mind me saying uh, his name, but David Taylor is one of the, the people that follows me. But we, he wanted me to talk to you guys about the pricing of um, Sony cameras worldwide, well, particularly here in Australia. And I wanted to ask everyone worldwide about the issues that they're having with pricing, because I thought, is this only something that's happening in Australia or is it happening overseas? So let me just put down here um, the time. Are we seven uh, roughly oops seven oop where are we keyboards jumping all over the place <laughs> i love it seven minutes roughly all right because david contacted me and like i said i'd love to know your opinion about this and i'm going to show you a couple of examples why i think certain countries are getting screwed and it's interesting because um Particularly here, and I wanted to ask if there's anyone from Canada that's having the same issue or, or the uh, UK or wherever you are in Europe, because uh, it seems to be uh, particularly bad here. So I'll start by reading this. So just 
bear with me while I read this from David that he sent me uh, yesterday. So his comment was, um, David, can you talk about the sudden price rises here in Australia for Camry gear? Um, over the last couple of weeks I, on the YouTube show, I, I, if you know anything, so he's asking me to just discuss this. So he said, for example, and I won't mention the company, but he said one company here has uh, the, the 200 to 600 uh, Sony lens. Uh, and he said it was $3,010 this morning. Then at 3 p.m. when he checked, it had gone up to $3,999. So basically a $1,000 increase in that day. And he said the same thing is happening at another camera company. I just don't want to mention the names. But uh, he said they're, uh, they're getting stick for uh, their current 25% off sale. Some say it's the Australian dollar. But in other words, they're giving a 25% off, but the prices have gone up that much anyway. Uh, and he just said, would you discuss this? Uh, because he seems to think that uh, are we uh, paying for like all of the lockdown and everything else with prices that are going up? And it's a bit weird because I thought, let me just close that. Uh, it's a bit weird because I thought um, I expected prices to come down. So let me just give you a couple of examples because I thought I'd show you this uh, because it might make you understand and also then you can come into the chat and, and talk about too, whether you think this is worldwide. I don't think it's affecting the US, but the people in the US can let me know as well. But it's certainly incredibly bad here in Australia. Uh, and I, I'm wondering whether Canada and other countries were the same, but but let's look at this. So I, I thought that I'd check out, um, I'll just have to move this over. I thought that I'd check out B&H, for instance. And the Sony FE 200 to 600 millimeter lens, in the US at the moment is $1,998. So that's the price that they're coming at in the US at the moment. Now, if I come to Australia and I search for the same lens, uh, these are the prices that are now showing up. So we've got 3,598, you've got 3,688, 4,000 in DigiDirect, 3,700 there in Camera Electric, and $4,600, oh no, that's for the 100 to 400, I think. But it looks like it's nearly $2,000 difference. Like, I don't understand what's going on here. Uh, this is nuts. And I'm getting reports that this is going on for all the camera gear at the moment. These prices are going up. Now, yes, I understand our dollar is absolutely crap here at the moment, but I did a calculation this morning and I worked out that it's a we're paying a thousand dollars difference. So even if you add the dollar conversion in, and you put in our GST um, into that price as well, we're paying a thousand dollars over what you guys in the US are paying for the same lens. Now that is nuts. I could fly probably to the US uh, and have a little bit of a holiday and probably come back and. and not save money, but it wouldn't have cost me that much. Like th this is nuts. So I'd love to know, um, are you doing, is the same thing happening in the USA? Is this, well, obviously not in the USA, but is the same thing happening in uh, Europe? Is the same thing happening in Canada, uh, Japan or wherever? I'd love to know, or is it just the Aussies that are getting completely suckered here um, by Sony? Now I would have thought in the current circumstances that everyone would have said, well, uh, at the time being, we've got to be very, very careful about how much we put prices up because no one's got prices. <laughs> no one's got money at the moment. Well, to go up nearly, what was it? I mean, he said they're up $1,000 in a day um, is ludicrous. And I just can't understand that, uh, you know, and it's really interesting. And uh, Now, I haven't checked this, but let's just go back. I'm going to go back to B&H. Uh, let's look, say, at a current Sony camera and let's just see what the differences are there. So we'll look at the Sony A7R 4 all right? So let's look at that. Uh -huh. Now, I haven't even looked at this, so I don't even know what this is going to be. So the price of the A uh, of that in the US at the moment is 3498 That's in B&H. All right, so if we're looking at that, it's 3498 dollars So let's now Google in Australia. So 3498 Let's Google in Australia and see.
So looking at the prices here, um, we've gone from, so in the US, it was 3,498. In Australia, uh, we're looking at the prices are ranging from 4,499, 4,356. Now, I think that's probably the price it's going to go up to. I've got a feeling that, see, some of these are the older prices. So I, I bet you any money that the 4499 is the old pricing. The 4399 here is the old pricing. Now, you'll notice there's two cameras here, which is George's and um, also... Uh, Camera House and George's have got it at 5.6 and 5.7. So again, uh, there's a $2,000 difference. Uh, it, it is nuts. I, I really can't... I really can't see how they can justify this. This is one... <laughs> everywhere i think as an aussie we are being totally screwed uh, let us know in the chat too guys about whether you uh, are seeing this as well where you are because uh, i'm really curious i'm not going to dwell long on this but i just wanted to answer david's question that asked me to do this and you know like always i always like to answer my subscribers questions um so let me just see in the chat i'm just curious to see what people are saying if anyone's noticed any differences in prices have you noticed anything in the u.s guys anyone going to buy anything or have they gone down in prices uh just curious on that um see gilbert said everything is on sale in the uk so this is what i don't understand as well pricing went up because we get tax for online purchases that's guy with the cameras saying that but i added that in with that and it, it still only should be what 11 to 15 percent and we're still getting charged um a thousand dollars extra so that that's what doesn't make sense to me jib said prices i haven't seen price increases but discounts uh disappeared slightly um tony said uh gilbert you are correct here in spain also uh prices are up and down um what else i'm just seeing if anyone else has said anything about prices in here um <laughs> i just love laugh langston said i flew from orange county man my arms are tired <laughs> Uh, Gilbert said everyone should move to the UK. Yeah, I know I'm going to have to come over and buy some stuff over there in the US, obviously. Um, I, I dread to think if the A7S is going to come out now, how much it's going to cost. Due to the fact of what I've just seen, you may get it in the US, say an A7S for three, five, or $4,000. It's going to be eight grand here in Australia. Like, you know. It's, it's crazy. Obeyed said, greetings from Vancouver, Canada. David, hope you and your family are doing well and safe. Thank you so much, Obeyed. Same to you, mate. Um, Leslie said, I noticed the price rise uh, when le with lenses when looking at the 90. Okay, so Leslie is saying, uh, saying notice difference in prices as well. Gilbert said, supply and demand, lack of supply. Maybe, Gilbert, but why does it only seem to be here in this regard? Tony said, um, in Amazon, Spain, one month ago, uh, the Sony 35 1.8 was 700 euro and the 70 to 350 APS-C was 950 euro. This week, the 35 was 492. So it's, um, and the uh, 70 to 340 was 729. Uh, I'll just show you that just so that you can see it. Uh, it's here. So he's talking about that right here. In Amazon one month ago, Spain, the 35 1.8 was 700 and the 70 to 350 APSC was 950. Uh, this week, the 35 was not, uh, 492. So it's gone down. Uh, and what was that one? The 70 to 350 was 729 today. Oh, no, it's gone up. It's gone up as well. So you've gone up there, you're saying as well. Oh, by the way, someone just gave a donation. I think it was Long Rider. Let me just show that. Thank you so much, Long Rider. Really appreciate that. That's five American <laughs> dinner David. I love it. Let me just see if I can bring it up. Oh, I can't show it. Let me, I just want to show Long Rider gave that donation. There you go. Thank you so much, Long Rider. Really appreciate that. Um, so, it, well, that's interesting. So it looks like it's gone a little bit up there in the euro, but not anything as drastic as, as down here. Gregory said it's not just camera, it's also computer parts. See, the interesting thing is I can understand things like anything to do with um, vlogging, broadcasting from home because they're in such high demand like if you go and say try and buy an atm mini at the moment uh, or any of the gear that i'm using to do these broadcasts they're incredibly hard to get uh, and that's because everyone is now streaming from home doing youtube working from home doing all that sort of stuff so i can understand that aspect of it but how many people are buying 
a 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Uh, so I'm not sure why that, and, and there's obviously no problem getting them because I think they were all in stock uh, or you could get them fairly easily in stock here. Uh, whereas you can't get an ATM mini, for instance, you know, stuff like that's really hard to get. Um, G'day, Ike. How are you? Send me 2200 and I'll buy it and ship it to you. I know it's ridiculous, Ike. This is what I'm saying. It's crazy. Um, all base prices are in US dollars. Uh, by the way, love Tony said, by the way, loving the 35. That's great too. Uh, Kevin said, I've only, uh, only sales I've seen here are instant rebates from company like Sigma uh, as well. Uh, I'll sell my lens right now and get a great price, secondhand prices. Well, that'd be the thing. If you'd bought the 200 to 600 millimeter here in Australia a few days ago, you can make $1,000 on it. You can make $1,000 instantly. That is nuts. Nivac said uh, US 3498 for the A7R V, uh, v the same as the launch price. Yeah, well, they've, they look like they're going up $1,000 here. So if you are thinking about one in Australia, guys, if you can get one at that other price, you may... Uh, want to think about doing it if you've got the money. Um, Langston said, this is nutty. I know, it's crazy. Uh, Tony said, uh, also, I've seen the 24 GM G Master on sale for 990 euro and one, uh, 1175 euro and new online uh, at 1179. I don't even want to think about what the, G, the 24 GM is here at the moment. Who knows? I, also, the 135, I bet you any money, I'm going to look at that. Let's, let's just check that. I'm just curious to see for you guys before I move over. So let's go in here and look at Sony 135. I just got another donation. So let me just go to the GM. And let me just show this donation. Thank you so much. I'm not sure who that was. Who was it? Hector, thank you so much. Let me just show this donation, Hector. Hector said, here you go, helps you buy that new Sony that's coming. <laughs> now shout me out, I love it. Thank you so much, Hector. I certainly did shout you out. Thank you so much. That's Hector Rivera. Thanks, buddy. Uh, let, me just, so let me just come back to this because I'm just curious to see what... So in the US, okay, the, um, this will be interesting to see what this is. So in the US at the moment, the Sony 135GM 1.8 is $2,098. So I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I'm a bit scared to check here. All right, let's go Sony 130. I'm going to go Sony 135 millimeter 1.8 Australia. All right, so US was 2,098. All right, Australia, I bet you any money this is the new pricing. $3,255. It's, it's nuts. I just can't believe that they've gone up. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, it's, it, it is really crazy. Uh, see, these lower, I bet you any money they're the lower prices. So, obviously, that's stuff that they've already got in stock. But Sony have obviously re-upped all their prices locally. The new price is probably going to be around that $3,255. Um, and there's another one there, see, $3,429. So, it looks like, it looks like we're paying a $1,000 um, Aussie tax. Oh my God. Hector said that's insane. I know it is. It's nuts. It is crazy. A black hole's collapsed on itself. Hang on, Jim. You're right. I've got to turn it on. There's the black hole. I've got the black hole back on. I should say cheers, even though it's Milo. I mean, this is, this is just ridiculous. Oh. Uh, Gilbert said grey imports are very cheap at the moment. I mean, that might be the thing that, you know, forces us to go that way. It's, it's crazy. Tony said in Spain, the corona uh, economic impact is really affecting everybody. You can find an A73 for 900 euro or the 100 to 400 for 1500. Nuts selling now. Yeah, and see, this is the interesting thing though, Tony, that the prices have gone up here. This is what I can't understand. They've gone the opposite way. So instead of going down, they've gone up. Um, I'm laughing, Alexia, you've got to get that black hole on Alexia. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God. You always crack me up, seriously. All right, that's all I'm going to say about it. Please leave in the comment box down below, particularly you Aussies. I feel sorry for us, honestly. Not only are we like everyone else where we've got no work, they've put the prices up $2,000 while we've got no work. <laughs> Oh, luckily I'm not buying anything at the moment. Oh boy, just wait till I tell Kerry that. The next time I buy something, I'm going to be in such trouble. Oh well. All right, so let me just close that because I'm not looking up anything else because I'll just get depressed because we're going up to the next story. Okay, so let's go into the next story, which is two new Sony cameras. Well, according to Sony Alpha rumors, uh, let me go 23, 27. So this story is, well, it's not saying much, but I, I just thought I'd talk to you about it because this was on Sony Alpha Rumours this morning. Um, our, <coughs> excuse me. Our 2020 rumours were right all along. So Sony officially registered a surprise RX camera that we told you would be announced soon. Now, th this is the part that I'm not quite certain about. Are they talking about that? new Z camera or they talking about an RX camera is going to be released as well I think I think that's that's what they're saying because they're saying another camera was re registered with this 5.1 gigahertz um, uh, Wi-Fi in it so a uh, wireless so that's now so apparently now there's two of them that are, are actually coming out so it said today Sony officially registered a new camera with 5.1 gigahertz Wi-Fi this means it's a high-end model and it just said, we told you on May the 15th that Sony plans to launch the A7S II successor and a surprise model in June, max early July. And indeed, Sony has registered a total of two cameras featuring the 5.1 gigahertz Wi-Fi module. Now, the interesting thing is the next story I'm going to talk about is this ZV-1, right? But that doesn't look mentioned anywhere that it's got that wireless 5.1. I, I haven't been able to find that uh, anywhere. But... Um, so it looks like what they're saying, Sony Alpha is saying, is that we're going to get a um, RX camera, so a high-end RX camera, and we're also going to get an A7S III or something around that line. Or it could even be an A7IV. I mean, who knows what that other camera will be. But it, so it's interesting. Anyway, so now they have registered two Wi-Fi these 5.1 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which tend to uh, will only be in the high-end type cameras that are coming up. And they're still saying that uh, this, the announcement is going to be May the 5th. Uh, what were they saying there? I think they're saying June or early July is the announcements for, for this camera that's coming up. May the 29th, we probably think, I think it was May the 29th, is going to be that ZV-1, which I'll talk about uh, in the next story. But... You know, it's it's still interesting. Now, there's another story that I'm going to talk about further on today down the line, which is talking about Sony's goal as, as say, maintaining itself on a number one position. Wow, Anthony just gave, <laughs> Anthony just gave me a big donation to help towards the camera. I've got to show it. Where are we? Anthony just said... Um, Australia, he gave me $20. Thank you so much, Anthony. Australia, 3,255 is US 2010. So it's on par with the exchange rate. No, but it's not that. It's it's $4,000. Yeah, that might be for the camera, but the lens has gone up by $1,000 over that, Anthony. That's the interesting thing uh, because the lens was 1,900 and now it's four th nearly 4,000. So it's uh, gone up like a crazy amount. Now, I agree. That sort of works out for that, but it's certainly certainly doesn't work out with the um, lens that I was discussing. But thanks so much for the uh, donation, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, what else were we talking about? Yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm going to talk about Sony staying number one goal, but because I want to bring that discussion more into that about what Sony could be releasing and things like that and how they have to justify what they're doing now. But So I'm not quite certain... Uh, what sort of camera this will be. I'm, I still will believe it if I see an A7S III announced uh, in June or July. I, I still would not be surprised if it's an A7IV. Um, I'm not sure at this stage whether anyone can bring out a camera that's going to cost too much. Uh, and I'd love your opinion on this, particularly in the comments down below and stuff, because you know I just don't know how many of us at this stage can go out and spend too much money. So in some ways, it makes more sense to me 
if they bring out something like an A7 IV that was priced sort of around the price that we've got for the current A7 III, but they put 4K60 into that. But you know, not a high-end sort of spec camera. It, you know, wouldn't have the uh, you know the massive high bit depths, uh, 4K 120, etc. But they could easily say bring out an RX camera. They could bring out say a Sony A7 um, IV that could have say 4K 60 that you could shoot for five minutes. Um, and I, I to me that probably makes more sense in the current climate than anything else like remember canon have announced the r5 but they haven't announced when it's going to be released yet it, it keeps getting pushed back so i'll even be surprised if canon don't push that back again and that's not even released until after all of this stuff settles down a little bit because um i don't know if anyone's got that money out there i'm, I'm still predicting that the canon r5 will be about three five to four thousand dollars there was a, a whole stack of stuff posted the other day in australia about it but i've checked those prices were only what they call a placeholder, uh, and I think the camera was priced at six thousand um, dollars US. It was, it was, I think it was about eight thousand uh, dollars Australian or something like that. But they were only placeholders. They were just put in there as an ability so that they could put it onto the website. It was a mistake, in other words. It's, it's not a real um, costing, and Canon admitted that. Uh, so don't go by what you saw for those sort of rumours about it costing, you know, six thousand US. I still think it's going to be in the $3,500 to $4,000 US price range, which, like I said, in the current climate is going to be $8,000 US dollars, $8,000 Australian dollars. Um, but uh, I, I just think at the moment it probably makes more sense for me. Uh, if I was running this business, I wouldn't be putting out an amazingly uh, amazing quality high-end camera that they may struggle to get sales on. Uh, it makes more sense to me to say have an A7 IV, which will be a brilliant little camera, amazing camera that could give us what we need to tide us over until uh, the Sony uh, uh, to, until the uh, Sony A7S is announced, sort of a little bit further on down the track. I could be totally wrong. I'm just trying to guess with you guys what I think may happen. Obviously, an RX camera probably, but I don't know. I mean, do you guys believe there's still a market in that side? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there is anymore. If you look at camera sales, that whole sector doesn't seem to be doing very, very well. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised about that, particularly if they've got that ZV-1 that they've announced as well. Like, are they sort of putting too much into that one sector? I think they may have been better to release an A7 III um, than those cameras. But, you know, but I might be coming from a totally different perspective as not being a permanent vlogger. So let me know what you think about that. I was just going to check down here just to see if anyone's talking about uh, this as well. Thank you so much for those donations, guys. Um, Hector, I think Hector, uh, Hector said, also put one in. I can't let Anthony beat me today. So here is another $11, making it $21. <laughs> uh, Hector, you guys crack me up, honestly. Um, I just wanted to see, uh, let me also check and see if anyone is saying anything about these cameras. Uh, Sizzleman said, um, I use the RX100. Uh, for travel vlogging, great camera. Yeah, it is. I have one. I mean, I had the camera, uh, the uh, uh, the Mark V, which I like, but I sold it. I just didn't use it. I mean, I would prefer to say have an A6400, but that or an A6600. But that's me. Uh, I'm now quite used to the fold-up screen. Quite comfortable with it. I would prefer it to fold out the side. Yes, um, but I do like the ability to change the lenses and everything else. Um, what else? Uh, just having a look down here. Carl said the FCC in the US is going to open up the 6 gigahertz band for wireless here soon. Wow. Um, Woody said the prices are only going to uh, are only going up buying from third party. Um, thumbs up if you like the show. Langston said thank you so much, Langston. Really appreciate that. Do really appreciate thumbs up, guys. I got um, three thumbs down before I start the show. <laughs> I uh, love it. Um, where are we? Tony said, David, the cup of coffee is messing with me. Now I have to get one. <laughs> I love it. Um, Langston said, re-overpriced cameras. Let me introduce you to the small company called Red. Yeah, I know. Well, you say no more on that one. Um, 
What else have we got? Scissorman said, yeah, it's pouring rain here. Oh, they're talking to each other. Um, Tony said, Scissorman, nice. It's crazy expensive for me, but I looked at it and finally chose the 35 for the low price. Have you noticed focus breathing on the 20 millimeter? So they're talking to each other as well. Carl said, the R5 will be much more than um, $35. Um, I think Jim gave a donation as well. <laughs> <laughs> Jim did. I got to show it. Oh God, you guys are amazing. Uh, let me just bring that up too. So Jim gave a donation. Thank you so much, Jim. You guys mean the world to me, honestly. Um, where are we? Um, Carl says if the R5 delivers on the quoted specs, uh, it, it's worth six thousand. Yeah, I don't think they'll price it at that, Carl. I really don't. But but you can all say, David, you were wrong, and I'll accept it. I still think four grand max US is what that camera is going to cost. Um, what else? Uh, Scissor Man, I oh, know they're talking to each other as well. I think uh, Gilbert said, I think they will bring out the A7S before the A74, showcase the new video features first, and then put in the A74. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say, Gilbert. Like I said, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, to, I would love them to, even though I couldn't buy it because I couldn't afford it at the moment, I would still love to have it there as an option. Uh, I really do hope they do release an A7S, but I just don't know if it's going to happen yet. But let's wait and see. It's going to be an interesting time, uh, that's for sure. Uh, Langston said 6K would get me a lot of uh, a lot of other cameras um, as well. Langston also said I need to find some raw 8K footage to see if my computer can cope. Yeah, that's another thing. You do have to uh, look about that. But remember too, one thing too, Max Eurov showed, uh, he did demonstrate, you'd have to go back and look at his channel, but he did demonstrate when he was talking about 8K footage. I think it was when the R5 was announced. It wasn't the R5 announcement that Max talked about it, but he did talk about it because he showed a laptop. I, th I can't remember what brand it was, but it was a high-end spec a gaming laptop and you could buy two certain graphics cards for it and he edited raw 8k footage on the laptop without it dropping frames with effects and everything all on board of it so trust me there are uh computers out there that can do it now i don't think it was it wasn't a cheap laptop i think it was around three and a half thousand us it was something like around that line but he certainly did do it in real time uh, and that was on a laptop so you can imagine what the next apple and pc workstations are going to do if you put decent graphics cards in them um so it's you know it's it's going to be interesting to see what uh uh happens in that regard uh, and that's about it so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into this zv1 so what are we 35 44 all right so this camera i'd love to know what you guys think about it. i mean is anyone excited about it i'm not but i don't know i mean if you're a vlogger i suppose you may be um this is the first leaked images of the zv1 i believe it's going to be put out um next month uh, no, sorry, the, uh, in a few days, I think, on the 25th or something, or 29th. It, it was coming up in the coming days, I believe that's what uh, Sony Alpha rumours were saying. Um, I mean, it looks like a nice little camera, um, but I don't know, do we, do we have a need for this? So <laughs> I'm just laughing at Aaron going, boo. Um, so this is the back of it. I'll, I'll show you some other pictures around it. They, they're just saying it, it's basically for video vloggers and creators. So they're saying there's a market for it. It's a 20.1 megapixel camera, um, specifically designed for vloggers and content creators. It, it features a one inch type stacked CMOS sensor and super fast AF. Well, we know the AF on this is gonna be amazing. It's amazing in like the RX 100s, like the RX 105 that I had had amazing autofocus. Uh, the versions after that would probably be even better. Uh, the A6400, A6600 now I've got incredible autofocus. So that will be just taken down and put into this camera. So we know for sure that this is gonna have uh, you know, amazing autofocus. I mean, that that's going to be a given. And I think they've probably also concentrated on the video autofocus too, which they've mentioned a number of times. Uh, it's got the uh, fully articulate, well, I think it's, I don't know whether you can tilt it down. This is the thing we've got to decide yet. Now, looking at the back here, I hope it has just got the one pin here that enables you to twist it. But I haven't seen any photos yet that show it to you twisted. This is what worries me a little bit. 
you notice here, like there's, they're only ever showing the uh, lens uh, or the LCD facing the front. There's nothing showing it tilted up and down. So is this not going to be a tiltable one? If it's not tiltable, that's a real bummer um, for this camera because a lot of vloggers would be doing things where it's up high and down low. Uh, and that to me would be a really silly thing that Sony have done if they've not added that ability to, to sort of tilt it up and down. Um, oh, it does say variable angle LCD. They just haven't showed anything on it. Um, it's a 2470 um, zoom lens, which is great. That's what I loved about the Mark V that I had. And I think they're saying it was going to be a 1.8 lens, which is also really good. Um, image stabilization as well. Uh, and that works very good in these cameras, particularly with that small sensor. The stabilization can work very, very well in those smaller uh, type cameras. Uh, they're saying it makes, it's got a very, very angle LCD. Well, there you go. But they just haven't showed any uh, images of it. Uh, it's des designed around the needs of the vloggers. Ne uh, leading um, edge AF, and it's got this directional three capsule microphone at the front as well. Uh, I'm just seeing if they're mentioning anything else that is sort of interesting. Um, the, uh, some of the things on it, you just go, Nuh. I mean, soft skin effect. I, I, I'll be surprised if that doesn't look terrible. It's going to look like you've covered the front of the thing with Vaseline, uh, unless they can do some amazing effect with it. But uh, I'll, I'll wait and see it before I comment on that. And also the bokeh, they're probably doing something similar to what Apple have done and Samsung have done with the um, with the uh, you know the iPhones that that make that fake bokeh in the background. So I suppose that's probably what they're doing there as well. So maybe a bit gimmicky, but it, it, you never know. It may work. And this is all going to be AI built on the sensor and stuff like that. So you know you're probably going to start to see this in other areas. But if you look at the the pics of this, I mean it's quite a nice camera. Obviously comes with a grip for your vlogging. Uh, looks like it's got the microphone. Um, port there, um, probably not headphones, I don't think. It looks like it's just a microphone socket. Uh, nice recording button on the top though, like that looks like it's nice and big. Um, you also come with this dead cat that you can stick on the top as well, uh, and it has the articulating screen. Uh, USB-C by the look of it uh, as well there uh, too, but I don't know. I mean, what do you think? I mean, does it really interest anyone here? Uh, I'm, I certainly would be, I'd be buying the A6400 rather than buying this, but but that's me. Uh, I mean, vloggers may jump on the bandwagon with this, you know. So let me just see if anyone is saying anything about this. Um, a few are saying, you know, not really that interested. <laughs> What's the furry thing? <laughs> I love it. Tony's saying, what's the furry thing? I love it. Sitting on the top up there. I love it. That's so funny, Tony. That's a crack up. Um, what else have we got? Um, Brett said, well, they could have taken the development effort and put it towards the A7S III, but we've only been waiting f for four years. Uh, so what's the rush right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I mean, and I'm going to talk about that, about Sony staying number one and all this sort of stuff uh, as the last story today. So <clears throat> I'll sort of mention that as we go uh, into that sort of area. Um, at least it's got a mic, Jack Aaron said, yeah. Yeah, and it has, Aaron. That That's really... Uh, a good point. So no headphone jack, though, is a, a bummer. I, I really think if they were going to be serious about vlogging, um, that they should have probably put a headphone jack in there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. They, they probably would have had enough room. I think, remember, that the problem is it's happened to me too. Like, the, the one thing that I'm always about is not having audio where you can hear yourself because that, that and it's hit me before as well i've gone out i've done a vlog or something like that done a bit of recording and then i haven't been able to hear it back on the microphone now because you're using like lav mics or other things like that it may not even like appear it's windy to you but then when you get home i've had terrible wind noise that's come across and it's ruined the the footage or sometimes a, a a while ago, I did a wedding where luckily I always back up and do audio somewhere else. But the audio that I was using grabbed interference from something else. I think there was a fair or something close by and they must have been using a lot of wireless audio type stuff. And it destroyed the audio that was coming in from my wireless receivers into the cameras. 
Luckily, I had um, a backup because I always usually take a couple of backups and do that as well. But the audio was no good. Now, I couldn't tell that at the time because uh, the camera that I was using, I think it was the A6400 was the one I was using for that. Uh, and it had no headphone socket and it was a, a, a real problem. It was the A6300, I can't remember. Um, and it was a real issue. So from that point on, I'm always paranoid about if I can't hear the audio uh, to, to actually check it, to make sure that the levels are okay, that there's no interference. And, you know, you can, particularly if you're using lav mics, you can get a break in the lav mic and you don't even know it's there. It looks like it's okay, but then when you're listening to the audio, every so often you'll be getting the cracking where it's it's got that uh, little bit of a break in it. So listening to the audio is critical. And as a vlogger, I'd be a little bit uh, worried if I couldn't even check the audio at all. Um what else? <laughs> Langston said, no, 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 Sony, what you're doing, sound department does not approve. <laughs> uh, said, to edit 8K RAW, you can buy NVIDIA Studio lineup of laptops made by brands like Razer and Asus. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it was that Max had, but it may have been one of those uh, that it had. Um and that's about it on that. Lakeson also said a lot of us need the audio monitoring. Yeah, it's it's critical. It, it really is critical to check uh, your audio is okay because it certainly can ruin it. And this is why I always say to you, if you're doing weddings and stuff, whatever you do, have multiple audio uh, backups happening just in case. I, I recommend to have two. Um, I always have the one that I'm recording on camera, then I'll have another one that's somewhere nearby, and then I'll usually put something like on my speakers that I've got over here, uh, I'll put it on the Celebrant speakers or something like that, and I'll drop down a lav mic or something like that and record audio from that, or plug directly into the DJ's work, uh, you know, desk or something like that. But I'll always have multiple backups just in case. Because believe me, the audio is probably more important than the video most of the time, particularly in weddings. If your audio sucks, it, it's terrible. You can get away, I know this might sound crazy, but if you can get away, you can get away with slightly blurry uh, audio or uh, video with something wrong with it, but you can't get away with crap audio. It, it, you just cannot get away with it. So audio is so critical. Uh, I learned that very, very early on. The audio is very, very powerful in, in video. <coughs> All right, so I want to go to the next story, DxO. Uh, 45. Uh, bit of a cough this morning. Okay, um, let me go over to this. DxO has put out a, um, well, it's, I think it's a ranking. Uh, it's a ranking of lenses that DxO, that, now they're only talking about Sony lenses here. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys say about this, but um, it's interesting. So they, they've sort of, I think they've rated lenses that they believe are best. I'm not going to go through all the scores because I'll put all these links down below and you guys can go all through it together uh, in your own time. Um, but I just wanted to show a few of these to you. So they've broken them down into um, lens categories, in other words. So what they've done here is they're talking about best wide angle lenses. Um, and they're talking about this, uh, and they've got a whole stack here. Now, there's a Zeiss Baddest 25mm. They've put that as number one. Uh, and they've put here the Sony Carl uh, Distion. That's the one I had. The 35 1.4 is number two. The Sony 28 F2 is number three. Uh, the Carl Loxia 28, 21, 40 uh, was 40, and the um, 35 mil Carl Zeiss lens, the 2.8 version, that's also the one that I had as well, was down at 39. Um, now they haven't put the the 24 in there, so I, I don't know whether they've tested that yet, because I would think uh, if this was the case, uh, what was the quick key for that? Yeah, uh, I think if this was the case. Like they've only put the baddest 25, um, that's the Sony 35, uh, the Sony 28, and the uh, Loxia 2.8 as well. And that was the 35 millimeter one that I had uh, as well. So I, I think the, the 24 uh, wasn't 
in their testing. Otherwise, I'm sure that would have been up there. I wouldn't. I would be very, very surprised if the uh, 24 wasn't the top mark. To be honest, from what I've compared it to. Um, but I just thought this might be interesting. That, like I said, they may not have fully tested the 24 mil yet. That might be why that's not there, because I can't believe in those figures the 24 is not there. Um, if you look at the best standard lens, they're saying that it's the 55 1.8. Now, I love that lens, and I know Aaron adores that lens as well. I love the 55 1.8. That had the top score if you're talking about the DxO mark score. But if you look at other areas, other lenses like the the 51.4 out scores it like in, in sharpness because that that the 51.4 is incredible. But if you're looking at the overall scores, the the 55 uh, 1.8 was number one. Uh, the 50 Sony, um, I think it's the the, the Loxia was number two. The 50 1.4 was number three. And then it's the 50 Macro and the 50 Macro 1.8. So they're the lenses that they're talking about, about the best standard zoom lens around the 55mm focal length. Uh, I do adore that 55mm lens, uh, though. If you... I used it the other day. If you want to have a look at the video that I produced yesterday, uh, it's on a gimbal. It's on a dual-handed gimbal. Um, I u- Did I use it on that? I'm just trying to think. Or was that the Tamron? No, I used the Tamron on that. No, it's a lens that's coming up, actually, with Kiara. Don't worry about it. Um, no, that was the Tamron 2470, uh, I u- 28 to 75 I used yesterday. Um, so... What are we looking at with the 85 mils? The 85 mils here, uh, the Sony 85 1.4 uh, was uh, number one. The Sony FE 85, and this shows you how much of a good lens that is. That's rated at number two, and it's slightly ahead of the banners that I've got, which is interesting because I thought they were exactly the same. But according to DxO Mark, uh, the Sony FE 85 1.8 is slightly better. So that's interesting. Uh, I went for the Battis and I've kept the Battis due to the fact that I like the weather sealing that the Battis has got and I also like the stabilisation. Uh, the Battis has image stabilisation in it, so I think it's much better for what for my video work and stuff like that because that helps. Um, and that's why I've kept the Battis. Uh, the Sony Macro is 44. What are they showing in sharpness? Uh, 61. You can see how sharp that Sony Macro 90mm is, though. It's rated at 61 in sharpness. That is nuts. Uh, the Sony 90mm in sharpness is crazy. Uh, if you look at it, I think the 55 is incredibly sharp, and that's rated at 54. Uh, the Sony 50 1.4 is 56, but the 90mm is 61. Uh, I'd love them to do the 135. I don't think they have because I'd love to see what the sharpness of that is through DxO. The 100 FT, uh, 2.8 STF is uh, rated last in that group. Wide angle lens, the Sony uh, 16 to 35 uh, is top. Uh, and then obviously the F4 version is under that. I've got the F4 version and I love it. Um, Best standard zooms, 2470. It's the Sony 2470 uh, is number one. And remember, these are only Sony lenses that they're dealing with here, or Sony Zeiss lenses. Uh, the 2470 f4 is number two. I had that, and I didn't like that much at all. It, it, I just didn't think it was a very good lens. Uh, and the Sony 28 to 70, I also had um, that as well, and I didn't like that at all. I sold that straight away when I got it. Uh, best telephotos. Uh, is the 70 to 200 obviously the 2.8 gm uh, next is the 70 to 200 f4 not massive differences between these uh, there is difference though and you'd want to be for the price that you're paying uh, i think the 70 to 200 f4 is a very underrated lens uh, i actually really like it uh, the sony 100 to 400 is rated as third uh, 70 to 300 is fourth and the sony uh, 24 to 240 is last so I'd love to know what you think about that. I mean, the, the interesting thing is, like I said, that they've left out the Sony 24GM and they've also left out the 135GM. So I think they just haven't had those ratings put in because I'm sure both of those lenses would have been the top of their spectrum. Um, you know, and that that's it. I just think they haven't done them yet. That's the only thing I can think why they're not on those lists. I'm just seeing if there's anything in the chat uh, about this. Um Uh, like I said, I've got the Tammy 7180. I bet you love it. I love that lens. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, like I said, I will get that one day. Once things settle down, uh, I'll be getting that lens for sure. Um, 
Um, what else have we got? Gene said, oh, he's talking to Langston. Uh, Woody said the 24 1.4 is better than all those. Yeah, I agree. That That's why I said I, I think the 24 is by far the one of the best lenses that Sony have produced. My two favorite lenses, or the three really, if you if, you, if I think about it, is the, the 24 um, and I love the 55. I just don't use it as much as I used to because I, I love the that 135 so much. So the, my main lenses that I tend to use now are the 24, I adore. I, I just love it. Uh, the 55, I love the Battis 85. That, and like I said, if you had the Sony FE 85 or the 1.4 85, that, that's perfect as well. And the 135, they're my favorite lenses that I can put on any camera at the moment. Um, and like I said, I used the 55 the other day and I forgot how beautiful that lens is. Oh no, I know where I used it. I used it on the um, video light when I did this. Um, mini panel review that thing um, if you go back uh, and check that review it's right at the start so you don't even have to watch the whole video but right at the start I did some footage of Kerry she was holding the um, the iPhone attachment which I haven't got in here it's in the other room uh, I had Kerry holding the iPhone attachment and also me holding it and just showing the bokeh that was in the background. Check it out, the, the 55 is stunning. The bokeh is beautiful, the rendering is beautiful, focus is great in low light, it, it's it's really good. Um, but yes, so I'm sure the 24 would have been on here, the 135 would have been on here uh, if they'd done the proper reviews of them. I'm not sure why they're not on there, so it is interesting. Um. Woody said the 52 is my go-to lens for astro, panos, and IR shooting. Um, the Sony 20 1.8. Yeah, that's true, Sizzle Man, and that's an amazing lens as well. That would be on there as well now because I think that's pretty close to the 24. Now, um, that lens, the Sony 20mm 1.8, really probably should have been called a G Master lens. I don't know why they didn't because it's that good that it should have been rated as a G Master. I'm not gonna get it because I'd, I like the 24 focal length. 20 is a bit wide. I, uh, I'd prefer to go wider than that though for my wide angle. I prefer something like a 12 or a 14. So I probably won't buy the 20, but I would love Sony to bring out say a 12 or a 14 millimeter uh, lens that has the same qualities as say the 20 millimeter 1.8. That would be amazing. I'd love Sony to do that. But yes, thanks for that. Uh, I forgot about that. Kevin, um, what else? Aaron said the 55 uh, is his favorite lens. I really want the Zeiss Loxia 21 2.8 uh, as well. Um, Langston said it's actually a bummer. In nine years at my job, not one camera company bid has come across the wire. Really, that's interesting. I wonder why. Um, the 24 250 millimeters rubbish. I haven't had that, so I can't comment about that uh, either. Triple Zero Seven said, "Why didn't they do the 24 GM? That's the one everyone is raving about." Yeah, I don't know why either. Like I said, they mustn't have had them for review at this stage. Uh, that's the only thing uh, I can think about. Um, got my 70 to 180. It better be good, otherwise I blame you, David. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to ha be happy with it. Where is the 70 to 350 excellent telephoto lens? Um, Mark said the photographers in my area look at DxO's tests for the different measurements, but are skeptical of the DxO composite score. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really pay any attention to it either. Look, to be completely honest, I just I thought you might be interested in looking at what they're rating it at. I base everything on my own usage, and that's why whenever I shoot things, I don't talk about much. Uh, of a lot of stuff about the sharpness. I mentioned a little bit, but I just show it to you in the images in real use. And that to me is more important than what a DxO chart is saying, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, what else have we got? Juicy saying, hi, g'day Juicy. If any Sony shooters are looking for a macro lens, the Laowa 65 two times APS-C and 100 millimeter are fantastic. That's great. A Sony rep told me that he uses the 100 to 400 instead of the 90 macro. Interesting. Um, Aldrich said, my next lens will certainly be the 135. Yep, you'll never, ever want to put that lens down, Aldrich. It, it is unbelievable. Uh, I adore that lens. Aaron said, his next lens is the Fujifilm 35 1.4. 
You haven't got a Fuji camera though, have you, Aaron? <laughs> Have you? Have you still got one? I thought you'd got rid of all of them. I went with the 20 millimeter over the 24, so I can also get the lower macro. Um, oh, okay, so you went with the 20. The 20 mil is amazing. It, it's an amazing lens, so you certainly have got an incredible lens there. Um, for portraits, 135, yeah, you can't beat it. For portraits, as long as you've got, remember, you've got to have the working distance. Um, if you if you sort of short or if you haven't got that space, that's where I use the 85. So that's why I bring the 85 as well as uh, the 135. And if I need to, I can always go back to the 55 if, if it's even tighter. But if I have the choice with anything with a portrait, I'll use the 135. That That is my go-to lens. In fact, I don't like to take it off the camera. Um Return to home, my next lens will be the 52 F2. Oh, beautiful. Um, if you like the 12 or 14, have you ever tried the Voigtlander? No, I haven't. And I, I, I used to have Voigtlander when I had Panasonic. I had the, I think it was the 10 millimeter. It was a 0 0.95 one. I can't remember. I think it was 10 millimeter. Uh, and I love that as well. Um, Roland said, David, did you notice a slight uh, internal movement in the Tamron 70 to 180 lens when the lens disengaged? It doesn't do it when the camera is on. No, I didn't. Just keep a check on it, Roland. If you're worried about it, um, get them to check it. I didn't notice that, though. Uh, I only had the lens for two days, though, so, uh, but I didn't notice it in that time, no. Um... David, did you see Roland Gaskin Studios question about the Tammy? Um, yes, I did. I just answered that then. Um, Juicy said the GM85 1.8 version 2 come out. It will. They'll, they'll do an, a version 2 of that for sure. I mean, I mean the thing with that, with the, um, with the 85 lens, it's slow focusing. That that's the problem with it. It needs the new focus motors like the 135 has. Uh, if they could bring out a Sony 85 1.4, or imagine it could possibly be an 85 1.2 with those linear motors, could you imagine how good an 85 GM would be? That would be one that would really tempt me. Um, except for it's probably going to be twelve thousand Australian dollars. <laughs> uh, Hector said, I have a Sony 135G, just picked it up and is the best lens I've ever shot with. Uh, it's so amazing, so sharp and, and buttery. It has that special look like no other 135. I agree, Hector. It's it's incredible. I just adore it. I really do uh, just adore it. Where are we? Uh, did I have those? Um, let me just see if I can show you those images. 135, did I keep them? Difference is here, I'll show you a couple of reasons why I use 85 over 135. Let me just bring these up. All right, this is a perfect example about where I would use um, I'll put it on this page, actually, because then I can make it a bit bigger. Uh, this would be a perfect example about where I could use a um, 85. Now, I'd use an 85 in this scenario because I'm, I'm fairly close, and I think that, that you still get a beautiful portrait look when you do that with an 85. I couldn't do this with a 135 because I would be too far away from the bride. Uh, like, I'm standing on a, a ladder here, I think it was, um, or it was a high chair and shooting down to get that shot. Now you'll notice too, you start to lose the focal point here because I've focused on the eyes. Well, that, that's exactly what I want. Um, so this is one of my staple shots. This is one of my signature shots that I always do. Uh, and this is the perfect shot for a, an 85. So you couldn't use a 135 in this scenario unless you were on a ladder that went about, you know, uh, eight foot above the, the bride. So it's not possible. So you need a 135 in this scenario, but you still get that beautiful depth of field there. Remember 85, is, is a great focal length. Uh, if we're talking about going then to the 135, um, where were we? Uh, just trying to see if I can find one in here. This is one where I did a 55. So to show you this one, um, this is giving you an example of how the 55 is also a beautiful portrait lens as well. 
Uh, you get a lovely look there as well. It's still flattering, like you're not getting too close. If you start to, say, get any uh, wider than this, you'll start to distort the face a little bit potentially. You can do it, but you've got to be very, very careful. So 55 is also a great uh, portrait lens as well. But I, I tend to prefer the the, the uh, 85 focal length than the 50 for most of my portrait stuff. But I love the 55 for video. Uh, and the 135 is more like this one, where it will just completely, you know, obliterate the background, um, you know, Kiara there is is just popping away from the background there as well. Uh, you know, and I love that that look that the 135 uh, gives me. And like I said, uh, it definitely is my favourite lens that I use in any of those sort of um, scenarios. So you know, th there's different cases for. There's different cases for all of the lenses that you want to use. You can get beautiful uh, portrait focal lens from the 35, but I think if you, that's more full body and stuff though, if you wanted to do that side of thing. The second that you, you tend to, to do more of a traditional portrait where you're moving in a little bit, I think that the 135 and the uh, 85 uh, and the 55 are just amazing. And I'll just show you three different examples about where I'd use one sort of over the other uh, there. Let me just quit those. Um, so I hope that gives you sort of some sort of idea. But if I have the choice in a, uh, a model shoot or a portrait shoot, the 135 will not come off my camera. In fact, I tend to have um, the 24 on one camera, so the A7 III, and then I'd have the 135 on the A9, and I'd just be shooting between the two of them. And that's the way that I tend to shoot now, because if I need the wide shot, I'll just use the 24. If I want to get that beautiful separation from the background, um, you know, and get that gorgeous sort of compression that, that comes in and lovely facial features, I'll use the 135. Um, so that's what that does. Okay, so let me go to the next story. Um, over here, which is talking about Sony's goal of staying number one. So one oh five. So this story is interesting, and I wanted to discuss this with you um, because it's it's actually interesting, and, and I wanted to sort of talk about a couple of things about this. Uh, I've noticed in the coming days, there's been an awful lot of talk about companies going broke, actually. I mean, the, uh, I believe Olympus have pulled out of, um, I think it was South Korea. They probably weren't selling enough cameras, so they've pulled out of South Korea. Um, and you looked at Nikon's... Uh, post that they put out the other day about having extraordinary circumstances about how bad financially things were. And I don't think that's just Nikon. I, I think everyone's going to have the same problem. Um, I'm hoping, and I really do hope that, that Nikon can come out of it fine. I'm sure they will. Uh, but it shows how bad things are. And when we looked at the sales numbers just recently, it showed even how bad Sony's sales numbers are uh, as well. But it, it brings up an interesting discussion because, and this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about, was that they're saying here that Sony's goal wants to uh, stay at number one. I might read this before I sort of talk about what my thinking is on this. Uh, they're saying they released a press release to highlight their corporate strategy. And they're saying this is the imaging and sensing solutions. Remember, they're two departments now. But they're saying due to uncertain market environments, Sony is carefully reviewing its capital expenditure. Uh, plus, in this segment, in relation to projected demand uh, through the fiscal year ending March the 31st, 2022, but its goals of maintaining the global number one position in imaging and gaining the number one position in sensing remain unchanged. Sony is also, also strengthening its focus on sensing solutions for mobile devices, etc. So they're also saying they're going to go into mobile devices based on this, on its belief that image sensors will be key devices in the AI area. Now they're also Interesting, they have the AI now coming into that ZV-1, which I thought was also interesting. And they're, they're talking about having the fake bokeh, uh, having that skin smoothing. That will all be AI built into the sensor. So Sony, I think, are going to start doing more and more and more of this type of thing um, 
in on the sensors, uh, you know, using and using AI uh, as well. Uh, solutions that deliver new value across a broad range of applications. So they're saying there that they want to have a broad range of applications. So it's an interesting statement in itself. But what they're saying here is that they want to be uh, number one uh, in the imaging area, uh, I suppose, camera. Well, th there's a, a few things about this, and it's not just going to be Sony, but I think what we're going to see, we're going to see a massive shift in the whole industry. And I'd love you to have a discussion about this in the chat and, and obviously leave it down below as well, because I think it's really interesting what may happen. I think most companies are going to have to be very, very careful about R&D and what they release. Uh, because I just don't think the market's there. This is why I'm really confused about Sony releasing a ZV-1 and if it is true that they're going to release an RX camera as well. I don't think there's a need for both of those. I'd love to know your opinion and whether you think I'm wrong, but I don't think there's a need for both of them. And someone mentioned before, I can't remember who it was, but someone mentioned before that they should have used that R&D to, say, develop, say, an A7S III or an A7 IV. Um, I think what's going to happen is th there's not going to be a room to have all of these uh, models in their, their sort of repertoire, whatever you want, however you want to say it. You know, there's no need to have multiple cameras that can basically do the same thing. This is why I'm still a little bit spectacle. Uh, I'm still a little bit iffy about whether the, there's going to be this camera that will come out that will have an A7 IV um, and the A7S III combined, and they do it in one go. So, you know, I'm just not sure about what will happen in that case. And, you know, and I'd love to know what you think about that because I don't think we can now have – too many models, because like Tim just said, too many models reduces profit. And it does, Tim, and I, I agree with you completely on that. Um, it's So I don't know about this at all. I, I just don't know whether Olympus can have so many models. I, I don't know whether Nikon, whether Canon are going to have you uh, be able to do all of this with all of the, the models that are out there, because the marketplace is shrinking. And, and this is the thing, we, we saw that in those camera uh, sales that I showed you recently from Sony and everyone else, how much the market had dropped, particularly with that point and shoot type cameras and things like that. And, and you know, no matter how much we look at it, and I don't know whether you're going to agree with me, but no matter how much you look at it, but I think this is the best way you can vlog uh, completely. Now, I've just ordered a, uh, a new cable that will let me attach my... Um, wireless uh you know these things to it um so so i can actually start to put these road wireless goes and stuff on there uh, i've ordered that hopefully it's coming today or the next day so then i can pl put that onto that cage that i had i think that this is a far better solution you know using something like filmic pro or or something like that um is a better solution than say going out and buying those cameras that Sony have just announced. But I could be completely wrong, and I'd love you to say, David, you're wrong. You're better off with that, you know, the, the ZV-1 or whatever we, we're talking about, you know, with this camera. I mean, you might say, David, this is the way it goes. But I'm starting to film more and more of my stuff with this. The video that I posted yesterday that had um, me talking... Uh, when I was reviewing this dual handle was filmed with the iPhone and I just synced the audio up later on. Well, I won't even have to do that when I can put the connection in there and I can talk wirelessly into that. I shot 4K60 on this. Uh, I didn't need to go that high, but I, I was wondering whether I was going to have to punch in. Um, but I shot 4K60 on this um, and did it that way. So I don't know. I mean, I just don't know if there's a marketplace for too much gear that's out there at the moment. I, like I said, I'm using more and more now my iPhones for, for a hell of a lot of stuff for B-roll. I'm using it for all this sort of stuff. Whereas before I would have used, say, something like an RX camera or whatever, whereas now I've found the iPhone or, you know, if you had a Samsung, same thing. All these new camera phones that are coming out have incredible video. So I'm not sure about it. I just don't know if there's market for that. And I think Sony probably should be concentrating on, say, the A7 IV line or, or say, bringing out a cheaper version of the A7 III, uh, you know, that is still an interchangeable type lens camera. You know, bring out an amazing A7000 or uh, an A7S III. You know, I just think that may be a smarter move 
at the moment than having too many of these models that are out there that they're developing for starters. Remember, the dearest part that you actually have to do about producing this is the R&D cost. That, that's the dearest part that, that sort of happens with developing cameras. So, you know, I, I think camera companies, there's going to be a huge change. I, I think we're going to find way, way, way less models released. Uh, and that's why Sony at this stage are releasing and reusing, and all other camera manufacturers are as well, they're reusing the old sensors. Sony are reusing the old um, uh, LCD displays that they've got that you know are archaic compared to what others are using. That They're just not developing those sort of things, and that's all due to cost. So what do you think about that? I mean, do you think... Do you think that the market's, it's going to take a long time to recover if it ever will fully to what it used to be? I think like everything else, there's going to be huge changes. It's not all doom and gloom. It just might mean that we'll have sort of better sort of marquee models and there may not be so many models in between, which which can be confusing, uh, you know, and it's hard for R&D. I'd prefer Sony to be, uh, you know, putting all their R&D into producing amazing models than, say, bringing out a ZV-1. But I don't know. I, I'd love to know what you guys think about it. So let's go to the Q&A. And we'll have a chat about that. Uh, so let's see what people are saying. So fire away if you have any uh, questions, guys. Um, too many, like Tim has, Tim has said in, through here that, you know, too many models reduces profit. Uh, yes, and it does. He said that there. Um, so, you know, you've got to be uh, careful with how much uh, you produce. There, it, it's a problem. Yeah, a phone is the way to go. It's always with you. And that, that's the thing. And I'm just finding, yeah, I mean, look, that there is a difference. You, you can tell when something's shot with a, an iPhone, you can tell because it does have a, a bit of a sharper look than, than if you're using, say, a digital SLR. I understand that. But, but I think with the future technology, that's going to change. They'll probably get better and better at simulating, uh, you know, that real filmic look. Uh, I think that's probably going to be the case. Uh, in the future, you'll probably end up getting to the stage. I mean, I know with Filmic Pro, you can shoot with log uh, and other things, you know, and, and it looks amazing when you do that. Like the stuff you can get out of an iPhone when you're shooting with log and stuff like that is incredible. Um, but it's it's only going to get better and better. Well, check out that video that I did. I'm not just promoting that video. I'm just saying, have a look at it. Uh, it was the one I posted yesterday with the gimbal. Check it out. It's um, just after all of the, uh, the the sort of gimbaly stuff that I did with the digital SLR. Then me talking about the product was all shot with the iPhone. So have a look at it and see what you think. Um, Langston says, my Osmo Pocket is perfect for vlogging. Good point, Langston. Yep, I agree. I know, um, I know Aaron uses his Osmo Pocket all the time uh, for that. He shot a lot of um, Ike's workshop in the US with the Osmo Pocket, and the footage was great. <laughs> Tim said, camera conspiracies would have something to say around just using a phone unless the phone has an articulating screen. And the interesting thing is too, don't forget, like you've got the front and the back camera, so you can be looking at yourself in the screen very easily. Um, it's, you know, it's incredible technology, really, when you think about it. You can have uh, wireless um, monitors connected to this, so I can be looking at this from somewhere else. It's it, the, the stuff you can do with phones is incredible once you get into it. Uh, Tony Bags, I'm basically covered for the 16 to 600 with only a very small gap. Uh, he's talking to someone else. I agree. Phones are so good now. I use my phone for vlogging and full frame for photos. Anything in between, it's a hard. It's hard to notice the difference. You notice the difference in day uh, once it gets dark, though. Like this sucks if it gets dark, uh, and that's the issue. Uh, if you're dealing with shooting stuff in the dark, um, it can be pretty bad. Um, but that will get better over time. Don't forget about that. I don't think uh, 4,000 US dollars for the RX 100R will do well. Uh, what more can they do uh, to the RX 100 over the last one? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what it is. And I, I can't see that selling very well either. Uh, I really can't. Uh, it seems like they are just um, riffing on a template. Uh, less cost because similar form factor. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
Huss said, this is why Sony sort of failed for me when they brought out the, a, uh, the three A6000 series rather than uh, one in all. They are spending money in the wrong areas. Um, <laughs> Aaron says, I'm not upgrading till my cam breaks. I love it. Um, Gilbert said, David, can I borrow your 24 and 135, please? Yep, pop straight over, Gilbert, and you can lend it. Tony said, if they improve the concept of the Insta, uh, that one is the way to go. Yeah, that looks like it's pretty good. Hopefully, I'll be able to get one sometimes and test it out. Um, ha said, Sony turned into Canon when they started releasing unnecessary models with little to no price difference. Um, and that's what they've got to do too. See, th th this is the other thing as well, that, you know, you... Uh, when they released the A6400 and the A6600, I said you're much better off to get the A6400 and buy a gimbal because the price difference that you pay for that camera, you're better off to buy a gimbal with it and use the A6400. Yes, it hasn't got stabilization internal in the A6400, but basically both cameras are exactly the same. So you're better off to get the A6400, buy a gimbal, get better footage if that's what you wanted to use it for. So yes, you're right. There's too many models, uh, way too many models in there. Um. Thanks and said, same with the Osmo Pocket. Once the light goes away, it's no good. Yeah, that, that's the thing you have to worry about. You know, there's nothing you can do to get around that though. Uh, Joseph said, it's weird. It's probably a supply uh, and demand thing and possibly company supply chains uh, that are being disrupted uh, as well. Samsung Ultra 20, a hell of a cell phone camera. Yeah, I haven't used that. Like, I'm just an iPhone guy because I've got Apple everywhere. Um, but Samsung and that, I fully understand, make some incredible um, phones. So does Sony. I mean, Sony makes some uh, incredible phones as well. Um, that, that the X CX one four A five. See, they've they've taken the Sony cell phones out of Australia, so we can't even buy the Sony cell phones here in Australia. Um, so it's you know it, it's a it's a problem. We can't even get those if we want them. Hector said, "I use my iPhone eleven Max Pro, my small rig iPhone cage, and the mini micro. There you go, your vlogging camera. I know, I love it. I reviewed that. Is that the same uh, cage that I showed Hector? Because that cage is unbelievable. It's fantastic." Um, but photographers are creators. Yep, very, very true, Langston. And that's exactly the point I wanted to make to Carol earlier too, that, you know, she was trying to say that the image was only as good as it was due to the camera, and it wasn't. It was her It was her brain and, and coordination that clicked that image at that moment. Um, also is here as well. Hi, Elsa, how are you? Good to see you here again. Um, David, have you used... Um, David, have you used an RF lens? Um no, I haven't. I'd like to. I'd like to look at them. Um, you know, I really would like to look at them. I haven't been able to get one yet. I would love to try the whole thing out just to see, uh, you know, to see how it is. Um, one day, though, I might be able to get a loan unit and try it off. Like I've talked to people before, uh, the R5 certainly interests me, but I'm not switching from Sony. It might just be that I get an R5 for the video features if Sony don't bring one out. Uh, there's no way I'm switching from Sony, though. There's no way I'm giving up my 135 lens, my 24, my A9. There's no way I'm getting rid of those. But the uh, but the R5 certainly may interest me to get one. Um, but like I said, the dollar at the moment so sucks here. <laughs> there's no way I'm going to pay. It probably would cost me $9,000, even if the camera was, you know, $6,000, I'd still have to buy a lens. So I'm going to be nine to 10 grand just to get uh, that camera with one lens. I, I probably won't be able to afford it. Um, David, buy an A6000 and underwater housing and go diving with some sharks. Oh, I'd love to. We had a mate. That wasn't you that posted the shark picture the other day, was it? We had an amazing photo posted in the photography videography school of uh, a shark diving amongst them. It looked incredible. Oh, so Hector did get the same cage. Yeah, it's a great cage, that one from Small Rig. I loved it. What's the most cheap, Dale, camera? I don't know what that means. Cheapest digital SLR. So if you, well, I, I, well, if it was me, I'd, I'd just get something like one of the old Nikons. But, you know, that because I came from a Nikon background, I never used to shop with Canon, uh, jo, jo, is it Josiah? Um, so I can't say, but, you know, the, the, some of the older D750s and all these other ones are really good and you can get them for reasonable prices, D600s or D610. 
Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there if you want to sort of uh, save some money. Uh, Hector, I think Sony will blow everyone out of the water. Global Shutter is coming. Maybe, um, Hector. I- I'm sure Global Shutter is coming. It's it's only a matter of time. Who knows when? Uh, that could be what they're waiting on. I mean, who knows what the A7S III is going to have? That's certainly why I'm waiting to see what happens uh, in that regard. Like I said, I haven't got the money at the moment anyway, so it wouldn't matter if Sony dropped the A7S III at the moment anyway. I couldn't afford to buy it anyway. Dwayne said, man, someone please talk me off the ledge. I bought the 17 to 28 Tamron, but I have the 24 GM and the 12 to 24 F4. I want to take it back, then buy a new body, Fuji Nikon Z6. <laughs> Dwayne, what's going on? I'll show you his comment. Poor Dwayne, he's totally confused. He's saying down here. That he's just bought the 17 to 28 Tamron, but I have the 24 GM and the 12 to 24 F4. I want to take it back, then buy a new body. So, Dwayne, what's the reason why you want to change? Um, does the EOS R5 uh, interest you? I mean, is that something that's interesting you, or what's the reason why you want to uh, change what you're shooting? Um, Jim put the photography videography school there. Um else uh what global shutter well if you google Glo- global shutter and you'll be able to read all about it i have put a video about it before actually somewhere in my channel i put a whole video about what a global shutter is um derek said first time i managed to catch you live so let me just say great show thanks thank you so much derek and thank you so much for joining us <laughs> you're just near the end of the show though unfortunately uh, is gas or a real reason? He's ta- I think he's talking to Dwayne. We, we're waiting on Dwayne to say why he wants to sell all his Sony stuff and move to a Fuji Nikon Z6 or the Canon ESR. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't go to a Z6, though, Dwayne. You've only got one card slot. That's not good. Um, that I certainly wouldn't be going that way, and I wouldn't go to an ESR either for that either. Uh, so the only way I'd do it is if I was going to get the EOS R5, which will have dual card slots. There's no way I'd go to a camera that had single card slots uh, as well. Um, 007 said he, read, he reads a blog. Uh, Dwayne is a wonderful bloke, a uh, great, great guy, and I'm just curious about why. Dwayne, if you don't answer it while we're in the live, it's fine. Just put it in a question down below, and, and uh, we can have a discussion about it in the uh, comments down below. Uh, good morning, David from Perth, West Australia. Resins just come in too. Josiah's here as well. Just up. Thank you so much, uh, Josiah. Uh, welcome to the channel. Hope you really enjoy it. So the coming days, guys, are up. But next week I'm going to have a shoot with Kiara. Uh, it's going to be some sort of sexy shoot. So I'm dying to do that with Kiara now. She's old enough that we can do a few more different things. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, uh, that will be someday next week. She contacted me yesterday to say that she wanted... Um, to have a shoot again. Uh, like I said, she's working now, so it's hard to get the time where we can get together, but I think she's still on lockdown. Uh, so we're gonna do a studio shoot next week, something uh, that's a bit sexy. I, I've got an idea where I'd love to do her in one of the, you know, the oversized male sh- uh, uh, shirts. Um, so I may do that or something like that with her. Um, so stay tuned, so that will be up soon. Uh, yes, Langston, she's back, can't wait. I've also got a video of Carrara I've still got to post too. Uh, that I've got to edit uh, and do as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So thanks so much, everyone, for, for the uh, show. Absolutely love you guys. You mean the world to me. Um, if you uh, can, remember, we'll be back with Aaron next week. Aaron had some computer problems. Um, so we'll be back with Aaron on next Tuesday, US time and, and Europe time. It's Wednesday Australian time at 8 p.m. Uh, New York time. Uh, So please join us for the Behind the Photo show that we'll do again next week. Uh, We're looking forward to seeing you all there. Uh, Any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, And, you know, I always get back to them. If you haven't subscribed, obviously, please subscribe. Love a thumbs up too before we finish the show as well. Um, Just ask the last couple of questions Um, here. Bruno said, enjoyed your video about the gimbal the other day. Thank you so much. Uh, Glad you enjoyed that. I have put two videos down as well, guys. I've just reviewed a dual handle that you can hold that takes out the Z-axis, the up and down movement. Check that out. Uh, I had to repost 
the video uh, from the US. So please, if you can, um, watch the last two videos. It just helps the channel if, you know, it, it sounds like a funny thing to say, but even if you just let it play and go through, it would still help, help my analytics, uh, you know, incredibly because the problem is sometimes if you put a video up and they only get 400 views, it hurts the analytics of the channel. So I would really, really appreciate it uh, if you could watch those last two videos that I've put up. Uh, they, they have been edited a little bit differently. Um, even if you don't want to watch them, just let them play through, but at least it helps with the analytics of the show, uh, you know, and that would help me a lot, and I'd really appreciate it if you could do that as well. Um, apart from that, everyone, have a wonderful weekend. Um, stay safe. Uh, thanks so much for uh, the donations, guys, the ones that gave me the donations. Really appreciate that. And we'll see you all in the next show. Catch you, everyone. Bye for now. Have a great weekend, everyone.